<laughs> it's such an instant uh, reaction. Um, welcome on this uh, beautiful Sunday. You know, we keep, did it rain yesterday here? No. no? Keep saying it's going to rain and then it goes right past. And we need it, we need it badly. I'm going to kind of step aside here. So I will have a, a children's sermon. We're going to talk a little bit about boats. Let you think on that for a while. <laughs> Probably don't know what. What about boats? So welcome today. Do we? I know we've got a few visitors, uh, first-time visitors. Any brave ones? <laughs> Promise I won't look at you. I just did. <laughs> where, where, where are you all from? Oh, close by. From New York. Well, welcome. Welcome. We have another. They might have gone back up north already from um, um, western New York. They're from. But, uh, they made sure they wanted to make that distinction, western New York. <laughs> Where whereabouts in New York? Long Island. Long, okay, the busy. So this is like, yeah, we don't have any traffic here, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, welcome. It's good to, good to have you with us. Um, welcome everybody again. Happy Mother's Day. Let us begin our service with our first hymn. Uh, Lord, keep us steadfast in Your Word. us rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to God, our Father, most merciful God. We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, 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 lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you of all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you of all your sins, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Please be seated for our psalm. Join me in Psalm 66. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You let men ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. Yet you have brought us out of out to a place of abundance. That which my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. Come in here, all you who fear God. And I will tell you what he has done for my soul. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the, do- the Lord would not have listened. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. Let us rise. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding accomplish them, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The first reading today is from Acts chapter 17, verses 16 through 31. While Paul was waiting for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him as he saw the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons and in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers also conversed with him. And some said, what does this blabbler wish to say? Others said, he seems to be a preacher of foreign divinities because he was preaching Jesus and the resurrection. And they took hold of him and they brought him to Arpagus, saying, may we know what this new teaching is that you're presenting, for you bring some strange things to our ears. We wish to know, therefore, what these mean. Now all the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there would spend their time in nothing except telling or hearing something new. So Paul, standing in the midst of the Arpagus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive in every way you are very religious, for I passed along and observed the objects of your worship. I found also an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, what therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God in the hope that they might feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of our own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we ought not to think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by art and imagination of man. The times of ignorance God overlooked But now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading for today is from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 13 through 22. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even you should suffer for righteousness' sake. You will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy. Always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. So that when we are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly not, did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few that is, eight persons were brought safely through the water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to wait for Holly to get back there. If you're wondering what I was taking my time for. Thank you. 
Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither seeks him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day, you will know that, it, that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commands, commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. This is the gospel of the Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. Invite the children to come forward. All I gotta do is remember where I put it. There we go. <laughs> I'm actually gonna sit. Oh. So, what is that? Water. 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 What is it in? A pot. A pot. 
What do you see behind it? What kind of place? Do, there you go. It's a church. This is the chapel at the St. Louis Seminary. That's where I learned to become a pastor, and that's where they train one of the seminaries. They train pastors and deaconesses and deacons. So in St. Louis, Missouri. So we're going to focus on the baptismal font. What is baptism? Okay, so you can almost say coming into Jesus' family, in a way. So, when you look at this, you've got... Oh, is that the bathroom thing? Yeah. Yeah. So you've got three pedestals that are holding the baptismal font up. What reminds you of three? Uh, What's enough? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's how we baptize. Literally, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. That's simple. So that's representing that. We have six sides and the base. Why do you think there's six sides? It's a representative of death. Six sides are death? Well, that's a, that can be a symbol of death. So in death we come in, and in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we're made alive again in the waters of baptism. And then you have eight sides on the top. Wait, there's eight on the top? Yeah. How is there six on the bottom? Well, this is six down here. So eight, eight on the top. Did you listen to the readings at all? Did you catch it? No. Eight. Did you guys catch it? Eight? Oh, eight lands. How many people were in the ark? Eight. 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 That, that's easy to miss in the readings. That's really, really easy to, to miss. Where the baptismal font is, in here we call it the nave. It's a, it's a uh, Latin word. This here is the nave. Ever hear of navy? Yeah, the navy army. What do the navy do? What do they? What do they? What did they usually? Not anymore. There's more. But what do they ride in? What do they use? Ships, boats. Okay. This is the nave, right here, where you sit. So you're literally in a boat. This is a boat. This is a boat. I think Noah's Ark. The boat. This is how Paul Noah's Ark was? No, no. Noah's Ark was much, much bigger. Much symbolism. Symbolism is what, what I'm talking about. But God saved Noah and his family. He washed away all the sin of the world in the flood. But saved Noah and his family. So we think when we come in here, we come into God's family through the waters of baptism. He's washing us. But daily, we're, we're riding in this boat through the rough waters of life, right? Life's not always easy. Sometimes you have winds. Sometimes what? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Okay, because that went right over my head. <laughs> so... Those are things that are rough in life, just like everyone here has things rough in life. Well, we won't go into detail. <laughs> we'll be here all day. <laughs> but we're in his boat. We come to his boat, okay? And he is saving us. We hear his word, and he's guiding us through the rough waters of this world to take, he's going to take us to heaven when when Jesus comes back, we'll be with him. Is there a huh? A that is good. See, that's one of those rough waters. You guys going through everything with your house. And now it's almost done. Rough, rough water. I mean, there's times, you know, when, you, when you're uh, 
I mean, think, oh, I'm with what's going on in Immokalee. You know, the other church. Yeah. You know, where their board decided to sell our building. That's, that's rough. Mm -hmm. That's rough. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. We don't know where we'll worship out wait, there. So, wait, so you're not going to that church anymore? No, I am. No. I am. Church. Don't get ahead. Don't get ahead. But God will lead us. Will lead us. And we pray for his will to be done. Well, it's the longest children's sermon. <laughs> and there's only three of you. Imagine if there were six like normal. <laughs> That's true. That is true. But he draws us to himself through the waters of baptism. You know, so when you're here sitting in his boat, kind of think of that. His na the nave, uh, the nave of the church. He's gathering us together. Because one day he's going to come back and take us all to be with him. Let's see it. Let's say a short prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything you have done in your son, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. What makes your identity? Is it what you do that makes you who you are? Are you a product? Of what you decide and do? Let that kind of just simmer a little bit. Or is it what you receive from God? Is who you are a self construction? Or are you instead a creation of someone else, namely God? There seems to be a little confusion in the world. A few years ago, um, there's a paper called the Minnesota Review. Culture and gender studies researcher uh, Whitney Stark argued that Newtonian physics is oppressive because it divides the observed world into binary categories. And this was a few years ago. And they go into a lot of this stuff about particles and uh, versus waves, space versus time. It goes over my head. Structures that she believes are arbitrary and lead to oppressive categories in other aspects of life. She contends, for example, that positive and negative charges observed in nature, encourage people to think in terms of male and female. I'm not sure what the heck she's talking about. <laughs> Positive and negative charges decide people to think male or female. She believes that conclusions drawn from nature should be suppressed in the name of social causes. She maintains that individuals should construct for themselves who they are. And she's not alone. In my mind, just goes, Poof. I just don't understand that. Are you who you are because of what you decide? Or are you who you are because you're a child of God? And I'm kind of letting that kind of simmer. Our identity is not founded within ourselves. 
We were created by God. We were formed in the image of God. I love this, the way Paul describes this. I see you are religious people when he talks to the people of Athens. So you worship the unknown God. He basically says, hey, let me tell you about the known God. <laughs> let me tell you about my God. The problem we have, and we're going to have for a while because of what is going on in the world, because of sin, because of the identity we know we have in Christ is we want to crush the other side. We want to beat up, maybe not physically, but in our mind, those that don't agree with us. I'm not saying, hey, just go along. I'm not saying that. But look how Paul is dealing with the people of Athens. I perceive in every way that you are very religious. Opening. It's an opening. He's not slamming the door on them. I actually hurt. <laughs> But he's leaving the door open. He's not agreeing with them. I mean, what was going on in Athens is not much different than what is going on here in the United States and around the world. In fact, in Athens, it was much worse. Much, much worse. Because it was commonplace. But we have all fallen short and I love this in the epistle, for it is better to suffer for doing good. In our identity in Christ, we're, we're going to suffer. People are going to pick on us. You think they didn't pick on Paul? <laughs> they picked on Paul. And they're going to pick on us because of our identity but our identity, we know, does not depend upon ourselves. It depends on our identity in Christ. No one can take away our justification in Christ. Nothing can take that away. Nothing that the world does can, can take that from us. That is ours in Christ Jesus. This is going to be a challenge for the church. Probably, maybe for the next 20 years. Is our identity in Christ and what's going on in the world today. And I'll just say the United States today. It's going to be an issue. Now we could be like. Sorry to pick on Europe. <laughs> we could pick up, and I'm not really picking on Europe, but not a lot of people go to church there. I'm not sure what the reason is or anything else. I, I don't know. But we could kind of just shut the doors and just stay out. We could kind of do our checklist of Okay, do we want them here? Do we not want this person? Is this person not the right person? Or do we do like Paul did and, you know, hey, I see you're religious. And then open up the conversation to let the gospel, the gospel shine. Be willing to suffer because our identity is secured.
You go through the gospel. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Wow. Do you ever find that slapping in your face? (laughs) Because sometimes we don't love as we should. Sometimes those struggles kind of cause us to love the way we should not. That we're not loving the Lord with our whole heart, our whole mind, our whole soul. And then you got the other part of that, love your neighbor as yourself. And then who is your neighbor? We got challenges coming coming up in the years years to come. But God says, Jesus said, who is God? I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, the Holy Spirit. The world cannot receive him. But we don't live as the world does. And we have received him. And he dwells. He is here in this place. He is with us in God's word. And he is with us to help us and guide us through this, the torment of this world. And what is the purpose but to keep us in the faith? So that no matter what suffering we go through, what torment comes, that we do not lose faith. The Holy Spirit is like this. The simplest explanation I can say to the, about the Holy Spirit is this. He's like a German pointer. What does a German pointer do? Or, you know, any hunters in here? You ever seen a, a pointer dog? They're like a straight arrow. And I think like Irish setters are pointers. And you'll see that tail out, and you'll see that head, and it's like an arrow pointing. Well, the Holy Spirit's like an arrow pointing, and it's pointing straight to Jesus. (laughs) That's the Holy Spirit's job. Point us to Jesus. And that's what matters, not all the suffering. Because we we know our identity. We know that. A little later in, in Bible class, we'll talk a little more about this gospel lesson. Kind of get in a little bit more. Because it's, it's full of some demands. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. Ooh. Do we always keep his commandments? Who in this place has kept every commandment? I don't see too many hands. <laughs> but we are his, and he's got us in his hands. We are in his boat, the nave of the church, where he gathered. Think of uh, Noah. He gathered the aid of Noah's family to save them. And he washed the sin away. And he gathers us together in his church. In his church. Leaving the Holy Spirit with us. Pointing straight to Jesus. Who has been merciful for us. Who has forgiven our sins. And is continually cleansing us. Each and every day. Until Jesus comes again. And then we'll see the fullness. And then there will be no more sin when Jesus comes back for us. Amen. Let us rise for the Apostles' Creed.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, and then to come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh Lord, you bless and protect your people in a world where many false gods, known and unknown, are worshipped. Give your saints a clear and bold proclamation of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, Heavenly Father, your Son suffered on our behalf to win salvation for us. Grant that we may have the privilege not only of believing in him, but also suffering for his sake. Lord, in your mercy, Lord of heaven and earth, you have given the spirit of truth to dwell in us through holy baptism. Grant your spirit steadfast guidance that the feet of this congregation and its catechumens, its youth, may not slip into sin and unbelief, but live always in praise of you before the world. Lord, in your mercy, Creator, you made from one man all the nations of the earth. And still you sustain us. Grant good leaders in every land who will seek peace and serve justice. Frustrate the causes of evil, violence, and oppression. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you promise not to abandon us in our need or leave us as orphans. Send forth your spirit and work through us, your people, that the lonely, the poor, the homeless, and travelers may rejoice in your presence and the power of your love. Lord, in your mercy, grant healing according to your will and sustain in faith those for whom we pray, especially Edison, Alan, Jeff, Timmy, and Martine, we we'll also pray for Kay McComb, who is in hospice, Larry and Gary, who both have cancer and are just wondering what is next. And Lord, we pray for those that are in our hearts but are fully known to you. Lord, in your mercy, all these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us. Father in heaven, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
Let us rise.
Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look down upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Uh, flowers this morning were provided by the Gerlachs. Um, Sam Harrison, which he usually sits like right here, but they're back up north. It's his birthday. Let's sing happy birthday to Sam. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sam. Happy birthday to you. God's blessings on you. God's blessings on you. God's blessings, dear Sam. God's blessings on you. And Beverly and Joe Cogoy celebrating 58 years of marriage. Isn't there an anniversary song? <laughs> yeah, actually there is, but I think it's from the Flintstones or something that I'm recalling from childhood. Um, stay for food and fellowship. Um, we'll be having a Bible study in Sunday school this morning. We're going to take a look at the, the gospel. We've only got like four or five questions, so it's, it's pretty light. Uh, let's see, Wednesday Bible study. Um, I didn't have time to, to speak with Chip because I'm going to be gone the next four days. I'll be in a, a leadership training uh, with the Florida Georgia District up in Orlando. Are you able? Praise God. Thank you. That we're, you're, you're better. That's good. And what is the Bible study on Wednesday? You're starting creation. So... Chip, a lot of you know Chip, but come and join us on Wednesday at 1030. Chip, how many weeks do you think you'll be going through creation? A little while, until she's done. <laughs> um, and then I'll, I'll join you next, the next Wednesday when I'm here, um, definitely. So it should be interesting. Council meets next Sunday, uh, so anybody on the council, please plan and join us. Uh, movie night next Sunday, and it's Minions? Yep. Minions? Minions. So the little yellow guys. Um, again, updated church directory uh, is available in the narthex, so all new and shiny. <laughs> Anything else I'm missing that I am forgetting? Ah, thank you. I knew I was going to forget something if it wasn't written down. Again, happy Mother's Day. And you might have seen him when he came in, but we have a, a, a gift for you, um, all the mothers. And mothers aren't just natural birth. There's many that have adopted. <laughs> and I don't mean adopted legally. I mean this, just helping out neighbors and things. And um, that's a wonderful thing. So Betty has a, has a flower. Um, should almost have you stand in the back so we can get everybody in the Bible study. <laughs> Go and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.